Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I know it's weird. It's uh, it's one of those uh, it's one of those really really early in the morning things, but it should have been done yesterday. It's it's one of those. Um, <laughs> Dark Souls video is already out. Now I'm ready for the preaching video. And we're going to go out of Job chapter 1 yet again. We're going to access Job 2 for just a second. This is in regards to our adversary, Satan. Actually, if you look up the literal Hebrew that's in the book of Job, the word that is translated as Satan in Hebrew means the adversary. Now, so obviously, when you read the text, it is a person. It's an actual being. It's not some general force. It's not just something in the air or bad thoughts or you know, a bad feeling or anything like that. No, this adversary is a person. It is a being. So that's point number one about our enemy that I'm going to point out here. He, he is, he's real. He's a being. It's, it's not just some force in the air or anything. It's an actual being. So with that in mind, let's go to verse 6 in Job 1. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So we've identified that this is a person who presented himself to the Lord. He spoke to the Lord, has his own thought patterns, his own thought processes, and that is an actual being. So that was point number one, and that's kind of detailed right there in those verses. Point number two, he is not, this is in regards to all the omni attributes of God. Satan is not omnipresent. He is not everywhere. He was going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. He wasn't just everywhere you go, he's there. It's not like that. It ta that's talked about in Psal one of the Psalms where it says, you know, if I, make, if I go to the farthest end of heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. Didn't look that up in advance. Google is your friend. But Satan is not like that. He is, he is in one spot, just like we are at a time. He is not everywhere you go. So he's not an omnipresent being. And then we go, and all actually, and also, let's make this point three. Satan doesn't dwell in hell. He dwells here on earth. If you look up in, I want to say it's Matthew chapter 25, the Lord will say, depart from me, ye cursed, into, um, into hell, where, they, where the devil and his angels are, go, are also. So I, I know I butchered that. I apologize. I haven't memorized that verse. Um, it's something along those lines. Once again, Google is your friend. But yeah, hell is the eternal home of Satan and his demons. But that's not where Satan is now. He is in the earth, walking to and fro throughout. I don't know where the idea came from that Satan was the ruler of hell, and he torments you there, and he just has a blast there, and he has a good time there. No. Satan will be tormented with anyone else who goes to hell forever and ever and ever. In fact, it was created for him and all the angels that followed him, him and all of his demons. That's why hell was created, not for us, not for man. He will go there forever. Right now, he's here on earth. I guess you can make that points um, three and four. Um, so point number one is that he is a real being. Two, he is not omnipresent. Three, right now he's on earth. Four, it's not in Job, it's in Matthew 25, he will be consigned to hell forever, not as a ruler, but as a sufferer there. And then moving on to verse 8, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Point number five, Satan is not omnipotent. He is only allowed to do what the Lord allows him to do. He can't extend his hand further than the Lord allows him to extend. He couldn't touch Job. Had Satan considered him? More than likely. But there's nothing he could do because there was that hedge of protection that the Lord had placed around Job and everything that he, uh, that he owned and around, and around his household. I, I interpret that to mean like his family, his loved ones, his children. So, yeah. 
Satan can't oppose God if God doesn't allow it. So he is not all powerful like the Lord. He is a limited being. He, it's, like a, it's like a dog on a leash. If you're outside of that leash, he can't touch you. And then for point number th um, three, we're going to go into Job 2 just for a second. It's going to be Job 2 verse 3. And then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. And that's point number six. Uh, six, kind of like that. I, can you see the finger there? That's supposed to be the sixth point. Um, six is usually considered a bad number, but this is kind of like uh, a nail in the coffin. Satan is also not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He told God, surely he will curse you to your face if you take everything away from him. God allowed Satan to take everything away from him. Job didn't curse him. Satan was wrong. He didn't call that. I guess there's the possibility that he knows that Job, he, maybe he knew that Job wouldn't um, curse God to his face. He just wanted to assault Job as much as he could. The thing with that is, God's the one who recommended Job to Satan. It wasn't Satan's idea. And two, Satan said, surely he will curse you to, her, to your face. It sounds like he, yes, he is the father of all lies, but it sounds like he was fairly confident in that. And he was straight up wrong. So as a review, Satan is a real being. He is not omnipresent. He right now is on earth. One day he will be in hell. He is not omnipotent, and he is not omniscient. Satan, he does have power, obviously. Satan took so many things away from Job, and maybe I can get to that in another video, but he couldn't go beyond what God allowed him to do. And despite the power that he does have, the God who is on our side is way bigger than him. Way bigger than him. So have faith and trust in God. Satan can't do anything outside of God's allowance or anything that God doesn't allow him to do. And I will, I'll add on to that, he also can't do anything that we don't give him permission to do. If you're being stupid, then you might be opening up doors and inviting him in. But if you're living for God and you're loving him, Satan, don't be afraid of him. He can't do anything to you that God does not personally allow. So guys, thank you. This is a bit of a long message. Thank you for hanging in there to the end. I love you, and God bless.